I'm Donald Fowler. I'm a PhD student with Hans Larsen, who's a curator in the museum. And I started the club back in 2005 when I was an undergrad. I was doing the vertebrate paleontology field course, and I was asking him about why more undergraduates aren't involved in the museum and um, public education. And so I decided to start a club the next, uh, the next fall. And that's how the Red Path Museum Club started. Well, it's important because it gets people involved. Um, my favorite part is probably like the dinosaurs. I also really like the tracks. Um, during the, the midnight tours, the, the tracks really kind of come out in, in the directed light of a flashlight, whereas kind of in the dead or light of day, it's kind of hard to interpret what's going on. Hi, um, I'm Pamela. I'm the vice president of the Red Path Museum Club. Um, this is the second floor of the museum where we have our dinosaur exhibit, biodiversity exhibit, and mineral exhibit, and early life exhibit. Um, we're in the biodiversity corner where I usually tour, um, and during our flashlight tours, which happen once every semester, we try to tell people that this narwhal tusk is a unicorn horn, and sometimes it works. Uh, these are animals that you can find in Quebec, like the Quebec Biodiversity Exhibit. This is a musk ox. This we have like Arctic animals, and over there we have like animals that are extinct or at risk of extinction. So it's a very fun tour because you learn all these amazing things about animals, but also depressing because then you learn how humans are kind of killing them. So, but it's really interesting. I'm Jacob, I'm one of the journal editors. I was kind of pulled into the, to the game by uh, my friends, but I'm really enjoying working here. I love giving tours, and I actually wrote the classic side of the tour. Um, but I also toured this side, the world culture side. So this is one of our favorite um, pieces in the museum, because we always get to play a little game with our, with our subject. We ask them, do you think if this is fake or true, uh, or fake or real? And the answer is that it's an authentic fake, um, which is actually where we get a lot of our things for the museum, things that were produced uh, as um, exotic or fetish items for the Western world. So this is actually a monkey's head that has been doctored to look like a real human, to look like a real shrunken head. And it's treated with the same processes as a shrunken head, but if you look closely, you can see that the cheeks have been cut to, uh, to make them look more human. And the real giveaway is the upturned nose, which is characteristic of, of New World monkeys. Um, and, but we do actually have a real shrunken head, and it's somewhere in our scary basement that we don't like to walk through. So we're always afraid we're gonna walk in on our mummy or our real shrunken head. Hi, um, this is George the Gorilla. Um, Back in the day, this museum used to be much more of a research museum and uh, students were in here a lot more. So um, one day, a few students came in wearing lab coats, looking all professional, and um, they came in and said, one of the profs needs us to uh, do some research on George, we'll bring him back tomorrow. So they carted him out and the museum was closing and they started to realize we don't know where the gorilla went and um, they found him the next day on Three Bears Fountain. Um, quite a feat because he's pretty heavy and he was totally untouched except for uh, his manly parts were gone. So poor George the gorilla, he's had some bad days. Hi, I'm Katie from the Red Path Museum Club. Um, I'm VP internal uh, on this floor, the third floor. There are three exhibits that are available to guests. We have the mummy exhibit, which I'm standing in right now. We have three mummies on display, including one where you can see the hairs um, from his skull. It's right behind me right here. And then we have the human evolution exhibit, which is one of three in Canada. So we're quite proud of that, the fact that we're bringing uh, the way humans have evolved, including their stone toolware, to um, the McGill community and Montreal at large. And then we have the World Cultures exhibit. There are two main trajector trajectories to go in the World Cultures exhibit. There are the classics, uh, Egyptology, the Greece and Rome. And then there's the more uh, World Culture side of it when we have things from Japan, China, 
uh, a shrunken head from the Pacific Islands. And so it's probably my favorite floor in the museum just because we have a lot of stuff about humans and how they've lived and how they've changed.